Hey guys, it's Jen and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button and returning subscriber, welcome back. As part of my January fitness series, I told you guys that I would eat like a celebrity at some juncture, so I have chosen Kourtney Kardashian. Uh, and thus my get up today is a little Kardashian inspired um, but I think she's one of the Kardashians that's have like a pretty healthy um, mentality and mindset for a long period of time she hasn't had too many you know uh, weight fluctuations outside of pregnancy obviously and so turns out um, if you don't know I'm following keto which is high fat moderate protein low carb and it turns out that she also, sorry, that she followed the diet at one point, so I thought it would be fun to dredge up some details on that and kind of, yeah, just copy or emulate what she eats for a day. I guess a few other things that she, you should know, she doesn't do coffee, she does green tea and bone broth, and, or at least at this time, I believe that she's still, caf or doesn't do coffee, <laughs> and she's also dairy-free, gluten-free, my best to adhere to those rules and then where there wasn't a whole lot of information for instance like the avocado pudding that she has is like really famous but that recipe is definitely not keto so i just adapted it to the best of my abilities um to make it like a keto friendly pudding and yeah that's basically it so let's just hop right in Kardashian loves starting me with apple cider vinegar and collagen so I decided to combine them and it actually tasted like kombucha it was pretty good <laughs> next I'm going to be making my own cashew milk since Courtney is dairy free this feels like a very Courtney thing to do so I have raw and salted cashews that I soaked overnight and I have some monk fruit sweetener pink Himalayan salt and pure vanilla extract and basically you want to make sure that you soak the cashews before using them otherwise they're just not going to break up in the blender appropriately so I just have a very average blender and I just go ahead and add all the different ingredients that I showed you but I really like making my own nut milks because um, you stay away from like the extra additives that go into the store-bought nut milks a lot of times they can use fillers and things like that and when you're trying to make a healthy choice and do dairy-free you're actually you know consuming all the stuff you wouldn't really want to consume so I also find that vanilla is really tricky like too much is makes it taste really bitter and then I just add filtered water basically double so if it's one cup of cashews two cups of water um, but the ratios are really up to you, your taste preferences so then you just go ahead and blend I love how white like white like such a pretty white um when you blend cashew milk and then here I have a nut bag so what this does is it just like catches the chunky particles especially if you don't have a very good blender like me um, so that you get the milk and not so much the chunky parts though I don't usually strain the whole batch because sometimes if I'm making smoothies or something like that it's kind of nice to have a little bit of chunk <laughs> um, so now I'm gonna make a matcha since she does green tea and there really wasn't much on how she consumes green tea, so I just decided to make my homemade matcha recipe, which is the cashew milk that we just made together, and then one kind of like tablespoon of matcha. And I love matcha because it gives you energy, but it doesn't make me feel jittery. And then a little pink Himalayan salt, um, monk fruit sweetener, which is good if you're on the keto diet. Also, I add salt to things because I'm on keto and you're not eating a lot of processed foods and things. 
um, so you need extra salt. And here's raw co coconut butter, um, which is just kind of nice. It adds a little bit of fat to the drink and keeps you satiated. So she does typically fast in the morning. And whether you think much in the morning is fasting, some people say either way, but that's, um, you know, a little bit of fat helps you get through your workout. And so, yeah, there is me drinking some matcha. <laughs>
um, lettuce and kind of like a spicy dressing. It also had some tomatoes and carrots, which are higher in carbs. So I kind of ate those a little bit more sparingly, but chicken thigh is great because it has some extra fat. Oh yeah, that was my day of eating. And I would say that's pretty, outside of like the avocado pudding, pretty similar to what I would eat in a normal day. Um, obviously the matcha recipe that I provided was very much just something that I make and was inspired by the blonde files. I'll put her handle here. And I think Kristen Cavallari also has like a similar-ish recipe. So I think I've like blended those two together. And yeah, I mean, I feel, I felt full the whole day. I mean, a huge part of that is that you're eating lots of fat. So even if it looks like I didn't consume so much, you have to think about like how calorie dense, like a spoonful of coconut oil or a spoonful of nut butter is. Um, so yeah, that's maybe if it didn't look like enough, I was definitely like very full the full, the whole day. And um, yeah, I, the apple cider vinegar wasn't too bad for me. Um, I've had it before. I actually like the taste. So I feel like most people like take the shots and then they're like, oh, you know, and that's like very entertaining to watch, but that just isn't my experience. But I, for the first time created, like I added, since Courtney does collagen and ACV or apple cider vinegar in the morning, I just decided, I was like, why don't I just like combine these? And it was really interesting. It kind of tasted like kombucha, like a homemade kombucha, which is cool because um, kombucha isn't like super keto friendly, but that version would be. So that was kind of a cool find and something I wouldn't have thought to do. I don't think I'll be doing the avocado smoothie a lot just because I prefer avocados in different forms. I prefer like making my own type of guacamole and then like dipping um, cucumbers or celery or something like that into the guac. Or I love, you know, doing two eggs in the morning with half an avocado with um, salt and pepper and lemon and to me like enjoying avocados is more of like a savory versus sweet type of dish is what I prefer however I definitely feel like if you have a sweet tooth and you're on keto then the avocado smoothie could definitely be something to try out so overall I think you know if you aren't keto and you wanted to try Courtney's um, diet like the suggestions that I would make would be the avocado pudding that she usually has I believe is like maple syrup or honey um, avocado and ice and like a lot of people do like coconut on top I've seen on YouTube I don't know if that's something she did or something youtubers have just copied I'm not sure I also think her emphasis on like spirulina I included that in the smoothie because that is something that she has talked about like collagen spirulina apple cider vinegar um, I guess a few of those like I should talk about some of the benefits so apple cider vinegar um, is, is said to like have a kind of appetite suppressant effect and makes you crave sweet things less so um, and then collagen is really good for their hair skin and nails and certain collagens <laughs> I could also have higher protein I like her focus on kind of <laughs> sorry padding um, I like her focus on like what the yeah superfood foods can do for you my last meal um she says that she would normally do like other options outside of just another salad would be um like a lean protein or a fatty protein if you're on keto and veggies so that's just another option um and something that she's talked about so if you want something heartier Sorry. She's also talked about doing lots of soups, so like asparagus soup. Um, so if you're kind of more in the mood for something lighter at the end of the day, a soup is a really great thing because before you go to bed, it's just easier for your body to digest. Uh, a soup is because it's already kind of been partially like digested or masticated for you almost. And so by the time it, you know, it's just much easier to digest. Like especially if you're eating later at night before you go to bed, that can be a really good option. But yeah. I don't know, I thought it was doable, I thought it was cool. Um, I think no dairy at all on keto is a little bit hard. I definitely tried to do limited dairy, but um, I'm not sure, I know she said she's dairy-free, gluten-free, I'm not sure if she was also dairy-free during this time. Would definitely, that would be harder. I don't think that's impossible. I know there's like vegan keto people and things like that, but um, you can use 
you know alternatives so it's definitely possible but I would I personally found that hard like in one of my salads that you saw there was a little bit of blue cheese um, a little bit of blue cheese and I didn't I kind of had forgotten so I just kind of ate around it but I think the cheese is really helping to like satiate you and I think if you are somebody who has problems with lactose I find that like goat milk goat cheese is just much easier for my body to digest so um, that's another option if you are looking to be somewhere in between like completely dairy free and eating lots of cheese I think that's a good middle ground um, but yeah that was it and if you guys like me kind of copying celebrity diets and you think it's fun um, let me know and I can continue to do that so thank you guys so much for watching please give this a thumbs up if you like it um, I'm creating content for you guys and it's really helpful to see what you guys like and what you don't like and yeah um, I guess I will catch you guys in the next one all right bye